Okay, so tear gases were everywhere. Shotguns and police cars running over people. People were running while escaping, resisting while escaping, as you can see here. Like, like they didn't understand, actually, and the police actually didn't care about people and didn't understand the passion flush and the commitment of the people at this night. A young girl, she was 15 years old, wearing hijab, she was crying in the street and we had tried to calm her down and tell her, don't be afraid, don't be scared. We are all with you. We're gonna help you and nothing would gonna happen. She looked at us with a powerful eye and a look that I will never forget in my life. And she said, I'm not afraid. It's just sad because we are running and we can still, uh, we can be united. And if we are united, they cannot win against us. Uh, she was there asking for social justice, freedom, and human dignity. But the police didn't care. It was the night of the 25th of January 2011 when the whole thing started. My name is Saif. I'm a young Egyptian. I'm labeled as a young Egyptian. Uh, I think that this label is really bad now in Egypt because it carries a lot of connotations. First, it means that you are in irresponsible, intolerant, radical, inexperienced, an agent for another country. It's something bad to be young now in Egypt, but we again, we still have hope. Uh, in, 18, in 18 days, we got united and we were able to overthrow the former uh, president. It's unity, all what we needed at this time. The girl was right, it's unity that we still need for now. However, like after the revolution by a couple of days, we got divided, we got divided among poor and rich, Muslim and Christians, Islamists and secularists, and old and young. But we still need unity. We still need unity. But it's now very complex. Uh, a couple of days after the uh, withdrawing of the former president, a guy who uh, participated in the assassination of the former president, uh, Anwar Sadat, appeared on the TV. He was justifying assassinating the president, and his logic was that because there was no other channel. It was very shocking because in our revolution where we're chanting Silmeya, Silmeya, and, and, uh, which means peaceful, peaceful, and believing and really believing in peace, it was very annoying and very provoking to many people for this guy to speak as this. But the question was that several people asked me, and I asked to myself, is this democracy? Is this democracy to bring someone who participated in planning a killing of a human being on TV and say this is democracy? It was very hard to answer this question. However, what we used to say that yes, freedom of speech is granted for everyone, democracy, equal opportunity, it's not limited to the intellectuals, it's not limited for people who think like us. But as you can see, it is all in slogans. There was, it's only the rhetoric that we rely that. There was no appetite of defending such issue, but we didn't understand. Another girl that uh, showed her pictures naked on the internet in Egypt, calling for freedom. Her definition of freedom is just provoke those who are affirming our religious and cultural identities in the country. After a long time of dictatorship, we just need time. And in our initiative as a junior think tank in Egypt, we came to realize that there are three characteristics of the Egyptian revolution. First, it's postmodern. Second, there is a strong solidarity among our generation. They can't break us, we are, we are indivisible. And third, it's the youth in Egypt are agents for change and they are not power seekers in the old, uh, in the old business or politics as usual. But again, what can be done? For a strong established democracy, we understand that there are two components for it. First is strong institutions. We need a strong, we have very weak institutions in Egypt. And second is having a minimum level of agreement. A minimum level of agreement to be the flexible framework of democracy, we lack both. In, when we sat together and we started to discuss, we started to initiate the spirit of the revolution document, which aims at conceptualizing this minimum level of agreement, and second, at documenting this 
moment of his, uh, uh, this historical moment and documenting the aspirations of the revolution and things that happened in the 18th days where people were able to sit together and demand the same thing. It was very hard for us. Starting February 2011, we started organizing informal sessions. Many people participated in such uh, sessions. People from the Muslim Brothers, newly established parties, leftist, liberal, uh, centrist, uh, youth coalitions, uh, intellectuals, relig religious groups. We started to discuss how can we create this minimum level of agreement. The, the, it was very simple, like very informal sessions where people had the opportunity to, to share their stories, to share their perspectives, to share their feelings about what happened during these days. And I need here to stop and thank everyone who worked with me on this initiative. They are the owners of the thing and they were very passionate. And I have hope because we have these people in Egypt. There is a strong solidarity. They are very passionate and they really love the country and they are looking to work together. There is hope. So we started to share such stories and just codify them and exercise collective writing. And at these sessions, there was a genuine possibility to choose dialogue over debate and to celebrate our differences over, uh, over flaming our conflicts. And there was a genuine possibility not just to repeat the rhetoric of our ancestors, but to take advantage of the so, uh, strong solidarity among us. And there are, ma there are three, there are many principles, but I cannot like share because of the time, but I will talk about three, which I think they are important. The first one is if you are following the Egyptian political discourse right now, you will find that there is um, a debate about the leadership, the concept of leadership in Egypt. And one of the principles that came before uh, the uh, before this rising issue was the concept of collective leadership, where and I will uh, quote that every individual in us had the opportunity to, to perform in a collective action. And there was a paradigm shift on, of the concept of leadership, where the leader is not the one who's occupying the whole scene, is not the one who's giving order, is not the one who people just flock around, but every one of us is a leader in his own uh, initiative or in his own action. The second uh, important value is the reconciliation between individualism and collectivism. Uh, every it's like the same idea that every individual should, can be a part of a collective action. And, and there is no compatibility between having a collective action and a community work and being looking for your individual interest. They intersect together. And again, the good thing about this document or about the process of writing this is that it, it took a stand against the cliche principles of, uh, of, any, of any slogans. Like we didn't say like freedom, justice, but we came with something real. There were a lot of debates and a dialogue to come out of these principles. And, and the first principle of the revolution of the document is uh, responsible anger. And this principle is so real and so deep and so, and explains what really happened in the Egyptian revolution. Responsible anger is uh, being, it shows that being angry is something important to unleash injustice. But this, res but this anger is accompanied by a sense of responsibility. And you can see where during the Egyptian revolution where people were demonstrating and other cleaning the streets. This is responsible anger. Again, it is challenging because it needs to be organic. It needs to come and be real and deep. But what we're basically doing is we're trying, uh, we're trying to avoid such challenges, not the police this time, but there is a Mubarak in our minds. There is a dictatorship inherited after six years of dictatorship. We are trying to get over it. So we are, what we are basically doing is we are trying to have this forum of dialogue as a first thing. And the second thing is that we're trying to do is to offer a best practice. The, while I'm saying this, there are folks now in Egypt, they are trying to write our first constitution after the revolution. And this is a best practice for it. This is a best practice where people came together and exercised collective writing. Another thing, and we stated it in the introduction and the conclusion of the document, is that time will take us and we need to recall this moment. And by recalling this moment, we need to document the feelings. And we thought it will be very, uh, like after 10 years, but it happened like after two weeks, not uh, 10, so we were lucky that we started early. 
So documenting this, and we can recall it again, and also paving the path towards a new state model inspired by such principles. And fourth is having this minimum level of agreement. Again, we do have hope in Egypt. We have this wave of the revolution or wave of anger is continuing. And to pay back to people who died uh, in Egypt, we are tr just trying to be united. And I'm having here, like uh, with me, the Egyptian flag, where I really love it. And at times when it's, it's very symbolic for me, at times where it's dark and no hope, we are hopeful, we are white. And in times when they are violent, we are peaceful but we're willing to sacrifice blood and all everything. Thank you so much.